Hello, I'm Trish Triumpho Sullivan, and I am here to talk to you about Ancient Rome, which is lecture number 14 in Art History, Art 1A. So here we are, so some major, some history and some major works of Ancient Rome. Let's take a quick look through the, our Roman stuff here. Um, so at its greatest power, Rome ruled over an empire spanning three continents with incredible cultural, cultural and artistic diversity kind of the first melting pot. Uh, this shows their influence. Let's look at a quick timeline here. Um, so Rome was founded according to legend in uh, 753 BCE. 509 was a period of um, Roman kings comes to an end and the Roman Republic is founded. Um, 275 BCE we've got uh, Rome controls all of the Italian peninsula. 150, Rome controls Greece. 31, Rome controls Gaul and Egypt, which uh, at that time is France and Egypt. Um, 27 BCE, the Roman Empire is formed, replacing the Roman Republic. And in 330, in the current era, which would be now, like right after Christ is born, Constantine moved the capital of the Roman Empire to Constantinople, right? The city named after him. Um, the founding of Rome was pretty interesting because the city of Rome had humble origins, really more as a village atop seven hills in what is now central Italy. Um, archaeological evidence today suggests that the site of modern Rome may have been inhabited far earlier than legend suggests. And we all know that people were around far earlier, right? Um, so the early inhabitants of Rome were Italic speakers, um, which means Italian, and included population groups including Latins, Sabines, Umbrian, Sam Samanites, and more. Um, well, according to the legend, the city of Rome was founded in, in 753 BCE by Romulus and his twin brother Remus on the site where they were raised by a female wolf as orphaned babies in this Famous sculpture shows them nursing on the wolf. Um, the, uh, they were influenced uh, by early Etruscan right, peoples. The, the Lupa Cap Capitolina sculpture on the left here has become an iconic representation of the founding of Rome. Um, but it's believed to be an Etruscan sculpture from the 5th century BCE, so they don't think it's even with Rome. Um, and they have a lot of early Etruscan influences, so that um, their on the Roman society was pretty notable. Um, Romans drew from the Etruscan alphabet and literary tradition. The culture of gladiatorial combat came from the Etruscans, um, engineering advances, and religious beliefs. Uh, the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus was the most important temple in ancient Rome. Its first version was built in the Etruscan style. Uh, seven kings of Rome. So the Roman kingdom lasted from 754 BCE to 509 BCE, and this was the earliest period of Roman history uh, when Rome and its territory were ruled by seven kings, right? We've got Romulus, uh, Numa, Pompilius, Tullus Hostilius, um, Ancus Marcius, Tarquinius Priscius, Servius Tilius, and Tarquinius Superbus. What? Let me get that out of the way here. Silence. Silence the phone call while we're doing the lecture. Um, so that gives you the the first step of the Roman kings. Then they, they the Roman Republic was founded in 509 BCE when the last Roman king, um, Tarquinius Superbus, Superbus um, was overthrown, and the monarchy was placed with uh, with rule by elected senators, which is more of a republic. Um, so the class divide shaped the eternal politics of the early Roman Republic. The 
Roman population was divided into two main classes, the patricians and the plebeians. And the status of being either was hereditary. So you were either like a poor person or you were like a rich person. And that was it, was inherited. Patricians were members of the, the privileged noble class. Until reforms were made, only patricians could be members of the Senate and hold most offices. Patricians were typically wealthy landowners. Um, the plebeians were members of the general Roman citizenry. With Rome, they often lived in apartments called insulae. Plebeians made up the largest percentage of the Roman population. Um, while both patricians and plebeians were considered citizens, there was little marriage between each class. Women had little rights in Roman society. They could not vote or hold political office or power. Um, from around 500 BCE to, 4, to 246 BCE, Roman power spread from the area immediately around Rome, which was the home region of Lat Latinum, um, to the wider Italian peninsula. Rome supplanted Etruria and the Greek city-states of southern Italy and Sicily. Um, Rome was increasingly exposed to Greek art and architecture after conquering Greek territories. Roman artisans came to admire Greek artistic traditions and emulated them in their art and architecture. Romans often used Greek architectural motifs in facade construction. The name of the Mediterranean Sea comes from the Latin for our sea. The Roman Republic spread across the Mediterranean Sea. It engaged in conflicts with other regional powers like Carthage and successor states from the empire of Alexander the Great. So that's right, it's our sea. It comes from the Latin for our sea. Um, Early, the early Roman Empire sparked a period of accelerated public construction and civil works projects. Innovative uses of concrete and brick, along with advances in engineering technology, led to an increase in the creation of aqueducts, amphitheaters, public spaces, and bath complexes. So they had, they had bathrooms, they had baths, um, they brought water into the city through these amazing feats of of, of architecture and with the aqueducts, which are many are still, like most are still standing and they still work, which is pretty dang amazing. Um, and the, remember, the Romans invented concrete. So they, they developed the innovative uses for concrete as well. Um, it was made of lime mortar, volcanic sand, water, and small stones. Um, one of the interesting things about, about Roman um, architecture is they understood that if they used seawater to mix their concrete, that it would resist erosion from uh, sea air. It was pretty interesting. Um, it was definitely cheaper than stone and often stronger to build with. Uh, Roman concrete recipe was particularly effective um, so many of their structures that were made of concrete are still standing today. Um, and scientists are, in modern era, studying Roman concrete to see if they, there are properties they can replicate. Because, like, really, if it's still standing, like, more than 2,000 years later, that's pretty amazing. Um, the invention of concrete facilitated the building of structures with increased complexity and helped enable the development of more technically advanced arches and ceiling vaults. The Romans used these architectural techniques in the construction of monumental buildings and structures. So you see the arches and vaults. Here there's a barrel vault, which is on the left, and a groin vault, which is on the right. And the groin vault shows that there's like four openings. Um, they also used concrete arches and complex engineering feats, including the construction of expansive aqueducts and bridges that are literally still in use today. That's how well they were built. Um, the Romans perfected brick making during the first century of the Roman Empire and used it extensively in both public and private construction. The Romans took their brick making skills everywhere they went, introducing the craft to local populations. The focal area of any Roman town was the forum, an open square or marketplace around which the major public and civic buildings of a town were grouped, in a place where the inhabitants could gather on important occasions. Um, the forum had political, judicial, and commercial uses. Sculptures and public art were prominently featured in these spaces. 
The Roman baths are one of the most common and important building types in the ancient Roman world and served as public community spaces. Free or inexpensive for their users, many of whom did not have internal plumbing at home, bath complexes let Romans swim, exercise, stroll, read, and relax. Pretty nice, doesn't it? Um, Roman artists created portable paintings, often depicting great military battles and victories on wooden panels. In style, Roman paintings largely emulated Greek painting. These paintings were displayed in public buildings or carried in triumphal processions. However, very few of these types of paintings survive today. Roman frescoes from the interior of buildings provide art historians with a sense of what Roman painting styles were like. And mosaics began to appear as an art form during the second century BCE. Um, wealthy individuals had complex, large mosaics in their private homes. More common were mosaics with bigger stones and only two or three colors in the homes of the less wealthy. Mosaics also adorned public spaces and were seen in public baths. The art and architecture of ancient Rome illustrates the active exchange of ideas, cultural influence, and traditions throughout the geographically and culturally diverse Roman Empire. Roman art and architecture also is evidence of complex Roman trade and exchange structures in Rome. For example, were made with um, Egyptian marbles and other imported resources. Romans were fascinated by the monuments and architecture of Egypt. Upon taking control of Egypt, Romans sought to bring art and monuments to Rome as a symbol of their far-reaching empire and power. Roman emperors' relocation of obelisks to prominent public uh, piazzas and venues like the Circus Maximus. Um, there are over twice as many obelisks removed from Egypt by the Romans as the number that remain today. The transportation of obelisks from Egypt was a massive and difficult feat that required purpose-built ships. So they actually built ships just to do that. Um, Roman emperors had images of themselves and their accomplishments shared via art and architecture throughout the empire to advertise and promote their, their role. Um, in this case, it's on a coin. Coins traveled all over. We, we talked about the touchstone and how that influenced um, the use of coinage. Um, so Roman emperors portrayed themselves in an idealized way. Augustus used propaganda to project a view of himself as a military leader who brought peace and stability to Rome. Relief sculpture of public, on public buildings and monuments was used at Rome to depict important events such as sacrifices to gods, victories at war, or addresses by the empire. This type of documentation is crucial to Roman scholars um, of, or to scholars of Roman history today. Um, I'm going to put up on pause right now for part one, and we'll come back with part two in just a moment.